like it's a little dark today in this room. It's not dark outside. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day today. <sighs> Thank you, Lord, so much for another day. Thank you for all of our blessings that we take for granted daily. Thank you so much, Lord, for everything that we that you give us, everything we are doing, are moving, are seeing, are hearing. Everything is a blessing from you, Lord. We are so thankful that you are in our lives. Please open up our hearts today to your word. It is a strong one today, Lord. It is a strong reading and we need to engrave it in our in our heart so that we can live by it, Lord. We want to live more in the spirit. We want to die to self and we want to follow you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray, amen. Amen, yes. So let him speak to us this morning. Good morning, Webster, good morning. Let our Lord speak to us this morning in his word. It's a long reading, so let's get started. I won't, I won't hold you up too much by talking like I do, go on and on and on. So let's, good morning, Peggy. Let's open up Galatians, Galatians, Galatians 5, 16 through 26 today. It's a little long reading. There's a lot of commentary on the bottom, so... God really wants to speak to us this morning. He really does. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envy each other. Amen. Wow, isn't that, isn't that... That's strong. That's very a very strong reading, something you can really, really meditate on for hours even because there's so many forms of things that we do that go into these, these words that he is putting in the Bible that describe. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Anika. Good morning, Aniko. Good morning. Good morning to you all. And blessings to you with this word that is very strong today. This is our world. I read the words on top of what we are not to do. And I just keep looking at those words because there's so much of that going on, including in our own lives. And we don't see it. And we don't see it. We are always in comparison. We are always thinking of ourselves as so much better as the other people sometimes. Without even realizing it, we do it. We compare. And we need to stop that. We need to stop that and love. We need to stop that and be more humble. We need to change. Today, God is telling us, change. Change while there is still time. When we are in front of him, 
That's when our time will end. He's asking us to live more in the spirit and to forget the flesh, forget the desires, whatever they may be. There's so many of them that we need to really watch out and guard our thoughts, guard our ears, what we hear, guard what we see. we got to be in constant guard. By being Christians, we are... We are to follow the Spirit. We are to follow the Holy Spirit inside of us, which is a person. The conscious and the Spirit are two, are two different things. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, I have my conscience. My conscience takes care of it. No, the conscience is something that can be led. You can be taught. You can be... Um, you can have good conscience, but then you can also be raised in a way that or live in a way or be taught in a way that your conscience might be telling you it's OK because that's how so and so or your family does it or whatever. You put um, a reason to your conscience, but the Holy Spirit is a different story. The Holy Spirit is a living person inside of you that's who god that's who jesus left us with when he rose to heaven and that's who we have inside of us not everybody has the holy spirit and they don't believe you need to believe and have faith and trust in our heavenly father and who he is in order to be able to have the holy spirit guide you in your life and you need to follow it Susan is saying, you can have a negative, harsh conscience as well. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And that is, that is what you're surrounded with, with and what you grew up with and what you think is normal. Some people's normal is different than another person's normal. And so this is, this is what we need to guide us right here. The teachings of the Bible the direction that we will find through taking the Holy Spirit and wanting to be led by the Holy Spirit and following God's, God's words. And today he's telling us to get rid of our evil ways. If you look at every single one of those words, it can mean so many other things like idol tree, just grabbing idol tree out of here. We can make anything our idol. We can make our kids our idol. We can make whatever it is that is taking up all of our time and our thoughts our idol, right? There's so many things. Politics can also be your idol. Now at this moment in time in our lives, I, I see what's going on out there. Everybody's going crazy with the politics situation. And... Oh, you're still here. Thank no, you, sweetie. I came back. I washed my arms. Oh, thank you, sweetie. You can't shower anymore. She gives my skin me, is dry. She gives me my sweetie pie, gives me my greens every morning so that I I, I have my greens. Or I'll get a text <laughs> like five times. Where are they? <laughs> She'll get a text. Where are my greens? Please make me my greens. I cook for them. They can make me my little greens, right? Amen. I to help. Love. I know. She loves me. I love her, too. Okay, so back to our reading. We were talking about idol tree, and anything can be idol tree to us if we don't have God first. By loving, by just doing these, the simple thing as love, everything else will fall into place. We need to love our Lord God first. It needs to be first in our lives. That's why it's the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> I, thank, I thank Jesus for... Being able to get out of bed and walk because of my RA, sometimes it's hard on my hip. And then I turn on the mass and listen to the homily or I look and I listen to a commentary or something of the reading I'm going to be doing with you guys. And so while I get ready, I'm thinking of this stuff. So, yes, I do wash, wash my face, brush my teeth, put on some makeup, do whatever my hair but as I'm doing it, I'm, I'm being enriched by the word and meditating on it. And that's what we need to do to start our day. 
or in the middle of our day or to end it. But we need to always be fed by Jesus's word, by God's word. We need to be fed because if we're not fed spiritually, the world out there will take us away. It will without even us realizing it. Like me, I have ADD. A shiny thing here or there will just draw me away. It'll it'll take me somewhere else. But you know what? The next day when I wake up, I will see what I did because I will open up the word again. And like today, we need to make consciousness and think about what God is saying. We need to forget about all these things that we're doing wrong. He's giving us another chance to start and be better, be more humble, be more loving, be less envious, be less jealous, um, complain less. So down here it says, Paul describes the two forces conflicting within us, the Holy Spirit and the sinful nature, our evil desires or inclinations that stem from our bodies. Paul is not saying that these forces are equal. The Holy Spirit is infinitely stronger. But if we rely on our own wisdom, we will make wrong choices. If we try to follow the Spirit by our own human efforts, we will fail. Our only way to freedom from our evil desires is through the empowering, the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's so true. We need to remember that the Holy Spirit inside of us. So we need to take time to stop before we make a decision or before we do something like make an, a buy, make um, like me when I, I like to impulsively buy my stress relief. I don't drink alcohol, but I go to Amazon and I sometimes buy things I shouldn't buy. It's taken, it's taken money from the groceries to do this, and I shouldn't do that. So I know where my problem lies. We know in our hearts where our problem lies, whatever it may be. One problem is not worse than the other because they're all sins to God, our Lord. Or somebody does other things to take the edge off. Sometimes I eat what I shouldn't eat. We sometimes don't need to eat. We eat our meal, which is what we need to nourish our bodies. But we don't need to keep eating or when we're stressful, grabbing a bag of chips or cookies or something. No, it's not needed. We need to stop ourselves. Things like that, little things like that, that, you know, might not seem that big, but they're all sinful. They're all sinful, you know, because... We need to watch what we do, what we say, and how we act, and we need to pray on it. And we need to look for our, we need to look to the Holy Spirit for our comfort. We need to look to God's word for our comfort instead of in things, in things of this world. We need to look to the Spirit for comfort. The Holy Spirit will comfort us. He will console us. He will guide us. Our conscience, our conscience can't guide us. It can't control us. It can't feed our souls. No, it can't. So we need to thank God for the Holy Spirit that's inside of us and use the Holy Spirit. Speak to it often. Yes, amen. The fruit of the Spirit is the spontaneous work of the Holy Spirit in us. The Spirit produces these character traits that are found in the nature of Christ. They are the byproducts of Christ's control. We can obtain them by trying to get them without his help. If we want the fruit of the Spirit to grow in us, we must join our lives to his. We must know him, love him, remember him, and imitate him. As a result, we will fulfill the intended purpose of the law, to love God and our neighbors. Which of these qualities do you want the Spirit to produce in you? I would like the Holy Spirit to change me and to help me to change myself, right? 
We need to pray for change, Lord. We want change in our lives, Lord. Help us, guide us, redirect us in our decision-making. Give us wisdom to discern what you need us to do in our lives. We need to look more to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's open up John real quickly. John 15, 4 and 5. John 15, 4 and 5. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. Amen. That's so true. See, we need to remain in Christ. And by us remaining in Christ, he will guide us like he's doing today. He is guiding us today. He's redirecting us. He's saying, no more of doing such and such a thing. Think better when you're doing such and such a thing. We know in our hearts what it is we're doing that we need to change. And our Lord is telling us today, change. You can do it. Change. It's all possible through me because I will bear much fruit in your life. He is divine. We are the branches. And if we listen to him, we will be fruitful. And the only way that matters to be fruitful, his way matters, not our way. We might see being fruitful in other in another way. Maybe, uh, you know, if you have a nice career and, you know, you're doing this and you're able to get this because you're doing this this way. God's fruit is different. God's fruit is not material. It's not materialistic. God's fruit is the fruit of the Spirit. And he, and he needs to guide us to change our way of thinking. That this world has got us thinking a certain way. We need to think God's way, not the world's way. We need to live not by the law, but by the Spirit. Right? Amen. It says down here, God is interested in every part of our lives, not just the spiritual part. As we live by the Holy Spirit's power, we need to submit every aspect of our lives to God. Emotional, physical, social, intellectual, vocational. Paul says that because we're saved, we should live like it. The Holy Spirit is the source of our new life. So keep in step with his leading. Don't let anything or anyone else determine your values and standards in any area of your life. Amen. Don't let your boss, your friends, even your parents tell you what you need to do. <laughs> Don't let them. You can listen. You can let them know kindly. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for your advice. But then you look to the Holy Spirit inside of you. You ask God, so is this what I really should be doing? Please, Open my heart and guide me to what my decision should be, Lord. And then give it a little bit of more prayer and time. And then you can decide when you're making a big decision about something. Always look to God first. Always look to our Lord first. And to the Holy Spirit inside of you. Sometimes we get like a, like a gut feeling about something. And we don't follow through sometimes. We don't question it because we're too busy. We're too busy, right? We need to question it because that could be a little nudge from the Holy Spirit saying, go do this or hold on, think about it a little longer and pray about it and I will enlighten you, right? We don't do that sometimes. We just go for it. I'm very, well, I'm a little better now since I've tried to have a, better prayer life I try to stop myself sometimes from doing things that I normally would have done in the past I see myself in the past and myself now and we're totally different people 
which is a good thing. It's a good thing. But I still, we still all need a long way. We still have a long way to go. And we will be learning and changing our lives till the day we die and until the day we're in front of our Lord. And then we will, hopefully, he'll say to us, well done. That's all we want, right? Amen. Amen. Everyone needs a certain amount of approval from others. But those who go out of their way to secure honor or to win popularity become conceited and show they are not following the Holy Spirit's leading. Those who look to God for approval won't need to envy others because we are God's sons and daughters. We have his Holy Spirit as the loving guarantee of his approval. Seek to please God and the approval of others won't seem so important. Amen. And that's true. That's so true. Um, I'm going through something. If you guys know me close, you know what I'm going through lately with a, with an emotional situation in my family, which we all have it. Sometimes I feel like, oh, you know, so-and-so is so lucky because, you know, they have this situation and, you know, their family, they're all so loving. They're all together all the time. It's, I shouldn't, I shouldn't think that way because we all have our things. We don't know everybody's heart. We don't know what they're going through. But in this particular situation, it has gotten to the point that it was affecting me so much. My blood pressure was skyrocketing. Um, it was really high for a while. <laughs> Every time I think about it or, or, or something comes up with this situation, I get so upset and depressed and, and this and that. And I shouldn't do that. And I've, I'm so much better now that I've, I've really, truly given it to our Lord. And I know that in his eyes, he sees that I'm trying and that I have tried. But sometimes we can try, 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 but a situation is not going to change because maybe it doesn't need to change. The way that I'm seeing the situation now is... Maybe God is protecting me from not living in this kind of a life, right? Because if somebody in your life is constantly upsetting you or, or, or even your health, attacking your health, because when you're physically and emotionally in turmoil constantly and are constantly getting hit by the same thing or something new, you think it's fixed and then it's not. Something new arises it's not good for you. And see, God, God sees beyond what we see. We just see, oh, yeah, we're going to all be happy. Everything's going to be perfect. But he sees beyond that. He sees future things that are going to arise, future problems that are going to happen in your lives. And then sometimes it's better to just say, okay, we just can't, we just can't be there at all. So this and this in the future won't happen. So I know that it's in God's hands. And I've given it to God. So it's starting to heal me. Healing takes time, though, guys. It takes time. Some days are going to be better than others. Emotional healing takes time. But with God, it's all possible. And what he thinks is all that matters. He knows our hearts. He knows that we have love. And he knows that we forgive. We know that. He knows that. We know that. And so the rest is up to that other person and, and the other, whatever situation it is, right? It's up to them. There's nothing we can do. So we just need to keep living in the spirit and not in the flesh. That's all we can do. And we've got to please God. We've got to remember. There's so many laws. There's like 600 something laws. And if you just follow the one thing, which is love God first and then love your neighbor, it's all about love, the word love, everything, all those laws fit into place. But if you're just living with the laws, I don't care if there's six, 60,000 laws, there's always going to be one situation in your life or some kind of, an, of, a, of a thing that's going on that, that you won't find a law for it. But if you live in love, it's all covered. Everything in your life will be covered if you truly, truly in your heart live with love. Let's read the word among us, a little devotional. 
isn't the fruit listed here enticing? We all want more peace, patience, and self-control. But just as in nature, the fruit of the Spirit is the product of a long growth process. An orange ripens slowly from flower to bud to mature citrus. It takes time for the water, light, and heat to bring it to its fullest growth. So too with the fruit of the Spirit. Few people proceed directly from furious outbursts to unflappable self-control or from envy to the unshakable peace of Christ. God knows that, and he is infinitely patient as his fruit in us matures. Who better to water your thirsty spirit than God? As you spend time with him in prayer, he pours out rather, he generously drenches you with his love. That love acts as water, softening the soil of your heart to receive the seeds of the fruit he wants to grow in you. Daily receive and gentle sprinkly, sprinkling of his love. Though perhaps you don't notice it happening at first, over time your heart will become arable and fertile. Along with water, the fruit of the Spirit in you needs light. As you read scripture or hear it proclaimed at church, the Holy Spirit shines the light of Christ into your heart and mind. Read slowly. Listen intently. Allow God's word of truth to shine as fully as possible in you. Read a spiritual book occasionally or the writings of, a holy, of holy men and women's lives or reflections by wise authors. Underline or note the things in them that stir your heart. Spend time quietly basking in the light of the words that strike you. And heat. Fruit ripens in heat. In your life, that heat might be illness, sorrows, or difficulties of some kind. It might be stress or uncertainty or loneliness. It might be that irritating habit of your spouse or the continual criticism of a co-worker. But you have been... You are being watered by the love of God. He will always sustain you through the heat in your life. Though uncomfortable, perhaps even painful, or seemingly unbearable, the heat will in time bring forth fruit. Christ is in you. Let him bear fruit in your life. Holy Spirit, thank you for the water, light, and heat in my life as you cultivate your fruit in me. Amen. Amen. I wonder what our what most of our fruits are going to look like. <laughs> we might not ever see our fruit that we bring forth by following God's word. We might see it once we're in heaven. Maybe our fruit will be at the end of the of our lives when we're in front of our Lord and he's saying well done and he's showing our life before our eyes maybe we'll see the fruit I wonder what our fruit looks like <laughs> I wonder what it looks like ah amen good morning Mona good morning my beautiful sister hope you're hope you're doing wonderful Susan is saying healing can take so much time yes it does but it's all in God's time. Maybe this is what I need to go through in order to bear my fruit. This is the heat. This is my heat. I'm going to remember this reading. I'm going to remember that heat is not something that feels very good, but is needed for the ripening of our lives, for the ripening of our fruits. So my heat might be this turmoil I'm going through, and it might take years. I don't know. But it's what I need to do. So I'm going to do it with good faith and trust in our Lord. May the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all kindly and give you peace and love and joy and consistency and wisdom and discernment to bear fruit for our Lord, to go through the process. Lord, we are here. Just guide us and protection out there. Amen. Amen. We'll see you all later for more prayer. Love you. Bye-bye.